Lesson 13.6. This is the extra lesson about Roman numerals. The Roman numeration system developed between 500 BC and 180 uses grouping, addition, subtraction pairs, order and position, multiplication, and seven capital letters to represent amounts. The letter I is equal to 1, V equal to 5, X equal to 10, L equal to 50, C equal to 100, D equal to 500, and M equal to 1000. There is no zero, and we use the Arabic numerals of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's also called the Hindu Arabic numerals. And Roman numerals are used for many things. They're used as fancy clock numbers. They're used for Super Bowl football numbers. They're used for science labels. You can see the toe bones are listed as Roman numerals down here. They're listed for names. If John Smith has a son that he names John Smith Jr., John Smith Jr. can have a son named John Smith III, who can then have a son named John Smith IV, and they would use Roman numerals for the names. You might see Roman numerals carved into a building showing the building date. They're used for Apollo space missions. Here's Apollo 13. And it could be a founding date of a club or an organization. Here we have Roman numerals along the bottom. And they're used for movie and book copyrights and numbers on an outline and more. Roman numerals use addition and subtraction pairs to represent amounts. So here, the letter I is equal to 1, so we have an I, I, I. That means 1 plus 1 plus 1, that's equal to 3. We have an I and then a V, that's a 1 and then a 5. And that means we have a 5 minus 1, which equals 4. And then the V equals 5. And a V and then an I to the right is 5 plus 1, that's a 6. When reading left to right, if the values in any pair increase, we group the pair together for subtraction. That makes a subtraction pair. So because the values are going from 1 to 5, they're increasing from a 1 to a 5. That means we have a subtraction pair. We would do 5 minus 1, which is equal to 4. Here, we're going from a 1 to a 10, so the values are increasing. That makes a subtraction pair. That's equal to a 9. That's 10 minus 1. The values increased. It went from a 1 up to a 10. Reading left to right, if the values are the same or decrease, we add. Here, the value is going from a 5 down to a 1. It's decreasing. That's equal to a 6. We add them together. Here, the value is going from a 10 and decreasing to a 5. It's going down to 5. We add them together. 10 plus 5 is 15. Now, if this seems confusing, stick with me because I'll explain some more. We can only group three of the same letters together before we need to use subtraction. We have an I, I, I. That's a 1 plus 1 plus 1. That's a 3. But we can't have four I's together. We can only have three. So we move to the subtraction of an I in front of a V, which means a 5 minus a 1. That's a 4. Here we have a V for 5, and then three I's. We can't have four I's, so we would have to move to subtraction to a 10 minus a 1 as, a, as an I and then an X. Here we have three X's. That's 10 plus 10 plus 10. That's 30. We can't have four X's. We can only have three. That means we have to move to subtraction and have a 50 minus a 10 to make a 40. Here we have a 50 as an L, and then three tens, that's 80. But we can't have four X's. We can only have three of the same kind of letter. That means we have to move to a 100 minus a 10 as an XC. That equals 90. For the numerals 1 through 10, we start with an I for a 1, an II for a 2, 
an III for a 3. Then we do an IV, which is a 5 minus a 1, which is a 4. Then a V, which is a 5. Then we do a VI, that's a 5 plus a 1, that's a 6. 5 plus 2 is 7. 5 plus 3 is 8. Then we do a 10 minus 1 for a 9. And an X as a 10 for 10. As the values decrease, we add. So we went from a 5 and we decreased down to a 1, so we're going to add these. When the values increase, going from a 1 to a 5, the values are going up, then we subtract. Let's try that a little more with the numerals 11 through 20. We have x as a 10, and then we have a 1, that's an 11. We add them together because the values are decreasing, they're going down as we go to the right. We have a 10 and a 1 and a 1, that's a 12. We have a 10 and 3 1s, that's 13. But we can't have more than 3 i's, so we have to move to a 5 minus a 1. So we have our 10, and then our 5 minus 1 as our subtraction pair to make a 14. Then we have a 10 and a 5 for 15, a 10, a 5, and a 1 for 16, a 10, a 5, and 2 1s for 17, a 10, a 5, and 3 1s for 18, but we can't have more than 3 i's together. So now we're going to move to a 10 and a 9 as a 10 minus 1. So it would be an xix to represent 19. Then we would do an xx, same value, so we add, and that would be 20. Roman numerals were not used to solve math problems or count. The Romans used an abacus to perform calculations, and they would slide the beads to add, subtract, or multiply or divide. To find the total value of Roman numerals, we first look for subtraction pairs that have increasing values. Here we have an XXVI, and we look at the values, it's going 10, 10, and then down to a 5, and then down to a 1. And because these are all decreasing values, we're just going to add them. Each value is going down less and less. Now we look over here, we have an XXIV, so these are the same, so we can add them. But look, we have a subtraction pair right here of an I and then a V. The values are going up. That's increasing. So we're going to subtract, and we'll do 10, 20, and then 5 minus 1 is 4. That would be 24. These values were all going down, so we just added them. 10, 20, 25, 26. We have two of the same, so we're going to add these, and then we notice that this pair is increasing from a 1 to a 5. So we do 10 plus 10 is 20, and then 5 minus 1 is 4. We have 24. M is equal to 1,000. So here we have 1,000 plus 1,000 plus 10 plus 10. And the values are decreasing. We're going from 1,000 down to a 10, and then to another 10. So that's 1,000, 2,000, 20 the de decreasing values, so we add them. And we look at this one, and we look for subtraction pairs first when we see these. And we go from 1,000 down to 100, but then back up to 1,000. And because this goes from the 100 to the 1,000 going up, that makes a subtraction pair. That means we have 1,000 minus 100. We have 1,000 plus 900, that's 1,900. We have one subtraction pair with increasing values. And we can think the number that is 100 before 1,000. It is. It's a 100 before a 1,000. That would be 900. We're going to look for subtraction pairs first. We have 1,000. We go down, which is great, thinking we're going to add and it goes down to 100, but look, we're going back up again. So as soon as we see it going back up again, we know we have a subtraction pair. Now, it goes down to a 10, but look, it goes back up to 100. That means we have another subtraction pair. Then it goes down, which is great, thinking we're going to add, but then it goes back up again. That means that's another subtraction pair. 
So we have 1,000 plus 100 before 1,000 would be 900. Then we have a 10, and 10 before 100 is a 90. Then we have a 1, and 1 before 10 is a 9. We have 1,999, and we have three subtraction pairs. Here we have 1,000, then it goes to another 1,000, and then it drops to 10, and that's it. So it all decreased. We have decreasing values, so we're just going to add them. We have 1,000 plus 1,000 plus 10. That's 2,010. So the subtraction pairs really can stick out to us when we notice it went down, but then it went up, see, in value. It went down, but then it went up. So the, the lower one with the next higher one made a subtraction pair. See that? And without subtraction pairs, we would need 14 Roman numerals to write 1,944. If we didn't have subtraction pairs and we could use as many of the letters as we wanted, as many of the Roman numerals as we wanted, we could write an M for 1,000, a D for 500, then we could write a C, 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 C for 100, 100, 100, 100. We could make four tens and then four ones. But look, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 Roman numerals that we would have to write to make 1,944. With subtraction pairs, we need only seven Roman numerals. We have 1,000 and then 1,000 minus 100 is 900. Then we have 50 minus 10, which is 40. And then we have 5 minus 1, which is 4. And that makes 1,944. And using fewer symbols made it easier to chisel them into stone, too. They didn't have so many Roman numerals that they had to chisel into the stone. When Roman numerals have a horizontal bar floating above them, it represents 1,000 times the number. So V is equal to 5. If we have a V with a floating bar above it, that means 5 times 1,000, that would be 5,000. X is equal to 10. If we have an X with a floating bar above it, that means 10 times 1,000, that's 10,000. But don't confuse the floating bar with Roman numerals that are connected this is a V for 5, and then an II, so that would be a 7. That's not the same as a VII with a floating bar above it that would mean 7,000. See how it's floating above it and there's nothing underneath it? Sometimes you'll see them written like this with the lines connecting them. That's not the same thing as this floating bar above it, okay? But if you do see a floating bar above it, that means to multiply it times 1,000. So Roman numerals are an additive system. They use addition when their values decrease from left to right. And Roman numerals are a subtractive system. They use subtraction when there are subtraction pairs whose values increase from left to right. And Roman numerals are a positional system because the position of the letters can affect their value, like with the subtraction pairs. The order or position of the Roman numerals affect their value, and Roman numerals are a multiplicative system. That means they use multiplication because the floating bar multiplies the value by 1,000. So I'm going to have this Roman numeral chart to 100 and this Roman numeral chart with the seven capital letters that represent amounts on my Facebook page so that if you want to copy, paste, and print it, you can, or you can take a screenshot. So that's the end of fourth grade math. I hope you have a wonderful break. And for those of you who are ready, we're going to be starting fifth grade math. And you can watch my fifth grade math playlist. I hope you're doing well, and I'll see you next time. Bye.